So yeah, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. Our first step here is to draw the forces that are acting on this junction of ropes right here. Now perhaps the most obvious force would be the gravitational force, which would be pulling straight down on that junction. And we can label that force mg, as long as we know that m is the mass of that block. And then we also have the tensions that are pulling up on that junction of ropes. And we can label this tension T2, and then this one over here can be labeled T1. Next, we want to break those forces into their X and Y components. And we can see that the X component of T2 is adjacent to this angle theta. So we could mark that as being T2 times the cosine of theta. And then the Y component would be T2 times the sine of theta. T1 can be broken up into X and Y components as well. The X component is adjacent to its angle, so we could label that T1 times the cosine of this angle, and this is the Greek letter phi. So we can write T1 cos phi. And then we have the upward Y component, which is going to be T1 times the sine of phi. Now, because this junction of ropes is in equilibrium, we know that the sum of the forces in the Y direction is going to equal zero. And we also know that the sum of the forces in the x direction is zero. And then even the sum of the torques is going to equal zero. We'll start with the sum of the forces in the y direction. So that means we're only looking at the y forces. That's going to be the t2 sine theta, the t1 sine theta, and then mg. Those are the forces acting in the y direction. The, the tensions are pointing upward, so they're positive, And then gravity is downward, so it's negative. We can go ahead and add mg over to the right-hand side. We can next look at the sum of the forces acting in the x direction, and we can see that there are two of them. There's the x component of T2 and then the x component of T1. And the x component of T2 is pointing in the positive x direction, so we can say positive T2 cos theta, and then the x component of T1 is in the negative direction, so we have minus T1 cos of phi. And why don't we go ahead and add the cos of phi over to the right-hand side. Now we go back to the question and it's asking us to find a value of theta that will minimize the tension in chord two. So in essence, we're trying to minimize T2, which means we're going to have to come up with a function where we have T2 isolated on one side and then everything else sort of isolated on the other side. In particular, we need T2 as a function of theta. And so this becomes the algebraic challenge before us here. What we need to do is go to this second equation in red here and solve it for t1. So let's divide both sides by the cosine of phi. And then we can take this expression for t1 and substitute it into the first equation. And then conveniently we can see that we have the sine of phi over the cosine of phi. And of course that will just be the tangent of phi. And then we have a common factor of t2 and since we're trying to isolate that we can factor it out. And we can now divide the term in parentheses over to the right-hand side. So we have accomplished our goal. We have T2 as a function of the angle theta. We know the angle phi. It was stated to be 40 degrees, so we can go ahead and plug that in. And now, in order to minimize this function, we're going to have to take the derivative. Now, we have a quotient, so it might be helpful to apply the quotient rule in order to find the derivative of this equation. And we will do so, but keeping in mind that our variable is actually theta. And so we can signify the derivative as t2 prime. And then applying the quotient rule, we would have the bottom portion of our quotient multiplied by the derivative of the top. Now, this is a constant, and so the derivative of that constant will be 0. And then we have minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom. And before we compute that, why don't we just knock away this term right here because we're multiplying that by zero. And now the derivative of the bottom will be as follows. Now we have a constant tangent 40 in front of our cosine theta function. And so the derivative of that is going to be the constant multiplied by the derivative of cosine theta, which of course is negative sine theta. And then we have the derivative of sine theta, which is cosine theta. And then still following the quotient rule, we're supposed to put this over the bottom term squared. Now after finding the derivative, we set that derivative equal to zero. So let's replace zero 
or substitute 0 in for t2 prime. Now the only way the right hand side could equal 0 is if the numerator equaled 0. So in effect we can remove the denominator from this. We can divide out the negative mg. Perhaps next we could subtract cos theta over to the other side. We could divide both sides by negative 1 so that these negatives cancel. And in fact, in order to find theta here, it looks like we're going to actually have to go back here and divide both sides by cos theta. So notice on the left-hand side, we'll just have 1, and then sine over cosine is tangent of theta. And then we'll divide both sides by tangent of 40, so that we can isolate the tangent of theta. And then, of course, to find theta, we'll have to take the inverse tangent of both sides of this equation, and that's going to allow us to isolate theta. So now we would just pick up our calculators and type in the inverse tangent of 1 over the tangent of 40. And if we do that, we get exactly 50 degrees. So this is the correct answer to part A of the question. And then to actually find the value in terms of mg of that minimum tension, or T2, we can plug it back into the T2 formula. We'll recopy that here. And remembering that the theta is 50 degrees, we can plug that in. And then we want to leave our answer in terms of mg. Now let's not forget in the numerator there's a 1 here. And so what we want to do is pick up your calculator and do 1 divided by this entire term in the denominator. And when you do that, you should get 0.77 mg. And so this is the correct answer to part b. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up and also subscribe. Send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I'll post an answer to it on YouTube.